once we have imposed phase one, it's pretty hard not to oppose some kind of phase two so as to at least uh, let off some of the pressures before you uh, lift off the lid. But I fear that this seemingly easy way out of our problems economically will mislead the American public into thinking that inflation is caused by private decisions. Workers, on the one hand, asking for higher wages and producers, on the other hand, charging more. Whereas the underlying causes of inflation is irresponsibility at the federal governmental level. And there's nothing about phase two that is going to impose the kind of controls on the government, the kind of self-control that, that, that will be imposed on the rest of the, of the country. Senator Buckley's speech will be given here in the Regency Ballroom of the Fairmont Hotel. He'll be joined, incidentally, by way of closed-circuit television arrangements by President Nixon, Vice President Agnew, Bob Hope, and others. It's all part of an effort to raise about $175,000 for the Republican Party's campaign coffers, and that it'll probably do. What it will not do is to heal the growing rift within the Republican Party of the state of Texas, a rift which comes about because of dislike with some of the party's leadership, and also almost desperation on the part of some because of the inability of the Republican Party to find attractive, good candidates for state offices such as governor. But all that will be set aside, at least for tonight, as the decorations go up here in the Regency Ballroom. It's going to be gaiety, camaraderie, and pretty chandeliers, for which most of those attending will have paid about $500. It's going to be a real problem taking care of Turnpike Stadium and the new Seven Seas Marine Life Park, especially when the people responsible are also running a sizable city. So the Arlington City Council will decide tonight whether or not to create a new non-profit corporation to operate the stadium, control broadcast rights for the Senator's games, handle advertising, and take care of both the stadium and Seven Seas. The new creation, to be called the Arlington Park Corporation, would function as an independent arm of the city government under the control of the council, with members of the board appointed by the council. Preliminary staff recommendations indicate that the corporation would pay for itself quite easily, bring in a profit for the city, and free city staff members for the more mundane task of running Arlington. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Arlington. It wasn't fear which caused tens of thousands of men and women to become involved for the first time in their lives in a political effort, and one which all the crew, pros knew was doomed to failure. And it wasn't hate which caused more than 40,000 individuals to mail in contributions. And it wasn't the hardening of political arteries which mobilized the largest most effective core of student volunteers to work for any candidate anywhere in the country during the 1970 campaign. Rather, it was a love of country, an abiding faith in country, an overriding concern for the welfare of America which brought this coalition into being. Shotgun squad, in my mind, is, uh, is an activity that should be resorted to only when you can properly identify a real potential of, a, of an offense uh, being committed. And we will use it under those circumstances. It will be more limited in use than it has been in the past, simply because I'm not in favor of placing a large number of these officers in stores and, and use up a tremendous amount of, uh, of manpower when there's no good indication that uh, we'll have uh, an offense occur there. Just by chance would be the only way you'd catch someone.
The Arlington City staff can now concentrate on solving the problems of the city instead of building an entertainment empire. The city council decided tonight to set up a non-profit corporation to take care of Turnpike Stadium and the Seven Seas Marine Park. The Arlington Park Corporation, as it's officially called, will be composed of a board of directors and a staff to control advertising and broadcast rights for the stadium and the tons of other work that frequently went to the city staff. The corporation is an arm of the city government with its directors appointed by the council. The city expects it to more than pay for itself in addition to returning a handsome profit for the taxpayers of Arlington. The council also decided tonight to issue $2,275,000 worth of general obligation bonds in order to finance expansion of Turnpike Stadium. Those bonds were originally earmarked for Seven Seas construction but were not needed for the Sea Life Park. It's a nice bit of capital for the new corporation to start with. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Arlington. This is the brain of a new computer system at the Dallas Police Department known as CIS, C-I-S, and that stands for Computer Identification System. Now, here's basically how it works. All citizens are urged to mark all valuables in the home with a specially designed electric pencil. Now, the items would be marked with that person's Texas driver's license number or Department of Public Safety ID number. That information would then be sent to the Dallas Police Department and stored in the CIS memory banks. Now, here's the advantage. Let's suppose that someone steals a TV set or a camera or a bicycle that has been marked. Later, a police officer finds that item. He will radio into Central Dispatch. The dispatcher will then key the code number into SIS. Within seconds, that item is identified with its rightful owner. That person is then contacted by a telephone operator who verifies where the item should be. If it is identified as stolen, that property is confiscated by the officer for quick return to the owner. Dallas is the only city in the nation using the computers like this. Statistics show that last year in Dallas, burglars took more than five and three quarter million dollars in property. Of that amount, less than half a million was recovered and returned to the owner. Much was unidentified and as a result, unclaimed. Its success will lie in its usage by the citizens of Dallas. Remember, Big Sis is watching out for you. Jerry Park. Channel 8 News on the move at the Dallas Police Department.
Prices will be considerably lower for another 500 persons coming to a different political function here at the Sherwood and Dallas Hotel. It'll cost $10 to $100 per ticket for persons to come and help celebrate the 45th birthday of Dallas State Senator Oscar Mazzi. But these people will be Democrats. Mazzi was first elected to the State Senate in 1966. And so far, he's one of the only ones in the Dallas-Fort Worth area who's announced he's going to run for re-election rather than seek a higher office. Oh yes, uh, I stay still though the, the, when the season is finished. I go now back when the season is finished. I'm play soccer and I came back. Is there any chance, Tony, that do you do, you do want to go back and play in Austria, play soccer in Austria? Yes, I can play for my team because my position is every time ready. Is, is, is there? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Up between by my club. Is there any uh, any chance that you would stay here and play soccer? No, uh, maybe, but. I can only, I like play and I need a good uh, soccer practice and to have only Vienna because uh, when Vienna repeat my team is a pro team and I need a pro practice. How long will you play soccer then uh, with them? Um, a, a half season. The season is starting in February and uh, finish in June, July and after the season I came back and I kick because this is good for my muscles and for all. So there's no chance that you would go back over. You will come back next yes, year then? Yes, I, when, I, I, when I have a chance in American football. How long do you think you can play American football? I think maybe 10 years. You see, uh, George Blender is the name. He's a very good kicker. I see him on TV and he's 44 years old. I see this never before. I must, I must say head up for these people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Dan Reeves was telling me that uh, that you had a, a tendency when, on the kickoffs last Sunday to keep your head down after the kickoff. Did you ever get hit? No, no, but it was only because I kick no good and I think, ah, Tony, you make a mistake. And the next time when I see I kick good, I get not the head down. But nobody came and hit you, though? No. <laughs> Do you, uh, are you concerned that that may happen? There's some big guys on that field. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every time uh, the, by the kickoffs, I run and looking for the ball. Every time the greatest guy come over me. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing to do is get out of the way. Yes, <laughs> but the best thing what I can do is I kick the kickoff in the end zone and I must no block.
we have always wanted to run with the basketball, and at times we've had a, a, a fairly good running attack. What we'd like to do is to make it a little more productive. We'd like to run a little more and, and handle the ball a little bit better, and in the end get a little more of our offense from our running game. But uh, basically we'll be a, a team that tries to hit quick and, and get the good shot, good percentage shot. So I don't think we'll see much of a change in our offensive velocity or our offensive attack. If at this time you had to pick a favorite to win the conference, what team would you choose? Uh, Jerry, I think this year will be a typical Southwest Conference uh, race. I, I wouldn't be able to pick anyone because I think, as we've seen before, uh, the team that gets the breaks uh, and keeps their uh, best basketball players on the floor playing, I think in the end uh, this team will win. And I think this could come from any uh, of the conference members. Uh, Southwest Conference has always been this, uh, this kind of league, and uh, I think it will continue to be this way. I don't think anyone will dominate the league at all.